Welcome back. It's time to see what's going on in these digital streets. Today marks 25 years since the passing of the rapper and actor Tupac Shakur. Shakur was shot after attending a Mike Tyson fight in Las Vegas. After several days in the hospital, the artist passed away. He was only 25 years old. Over the years, there have been countless theories as to who is responsible for the shooting, but no one has been arrested for the murder. You know, when Tupac was killed, I was a freshman in college. I managed, I was 17, I managed to live an entire childhood, finish a childhood, have my 20s, my 30s, I'm in my 40s. And it's only now that I fully appreciate just how young Pac was, which only makes him even more brilliant, more amazing, to have that level of depth, that level of clarity, that level of political consciousness, uh, that, that amount of work at 25 years old is extraordinary. And it makes me think about who Pac would have been if he had lived to be 35, 45, 55. Pac would be 50 right now. He would be a grown man. He would be, you know, on the tier with Jay-Z and Nas and these other men who we've watched grow into something different than they were in their teens and 20s and 30s. And so to see Pac now, to imagine what Pac could have been only makes his death that, that much sadder. It makes me that much more angry at who stole his life. It makes me think about all the other young men, the other young black men in this country who have the ability to be extraordinary if we just give them the space and the time to live. In some disturbing news, slain rapper Pop Smoke's gravesite was vandalized at Greenwood Cemetery in Brooklyn over the weekend. TMZ is reporting the crypt was damaged sometime between 2.30 p.m. on Friday and 2 p.m. on Saturday. The media outlet also reports around $500 worth of damage. Vandals smashed the mausoleum plaque and also attempted to remove his casket. NYPD has launched an investigation into the incident. Pop Smoke passed away in early 2020 during an alleged home invasion. I, I don't even know what to say to this. You know, the loss of Pop Smoke was devastating. The circumstances around the home invasion, how he got uh, put in the position to be killed at such a young age, it's just as we're talking about Pac, is so heartbreaking. And then to watch people disrespect his memory, disrespect his life, attempt to steal the casket. I mean, it could be for money, it could be a symbolic gesture. I don't want to speculate about what it was, but what I know for certain is that this was disgusting. And whoever did this deserves some accountability. MTV held its annual Video Music Awards last night in Brooklyn, New York, and black women had some of the most jaw-dropping performance of the night, as they always do. Host Doja Cat performed, as well as Chloe Bailey, Normani, and more. Singer Normani paid homage to Janet Jackson by bringing Tiana Taylor on stage during her performance of the single Wild Side, recreating Jackson's infamous Would You Mind lap dance, which she bodied. And Twitter users applauded Chloe Bailey as she made her solo debut, performing her viral song Have Mercy, uh, where it recently dropped. Yo, first of all, whenever you want your award show to win, you get black women. Whenever you want to succeed, you get black women. Whenever you want to shine, you get black women. So I'm not surprised that black women tore apart these MTV awards. But y'all gonna stop sleeping on Tiana Taylor. Y'all gonna stop sleeping on this young sister, Chloe. Y'all gonna stop sleeping on all these people because they are extraordinary. They actually made people look back at the VMAs. You know, for a long time, the VMAs fell off. It was BET Awards all we cared about. And I still think the BET Awards are the best awards show going. But the VMAs looked pretty good last night, man. And it's all because of the labor of black women. All right. It is always exciting to see what outfits people are going to pop out with during New York Fashion Week. And this year, NBA player Russell Westbrook caught the attention of the digital streets for the outfit he wore at the Tom Brown Spring 2022 show. The NBA star posted a picture wearing a kilt, a cardigan sweater, black boots, and blue hair. Social media went nuts and they started going back and forth on whether the outfit was a hit or a miss. Kid Cudi pulled up to the fashion event with a similar outfit, rocking blue hair, a long sleeve t-shirt, and a traditional dress. Yo, soon as I saw that Russell Westbrook was rocking this kilt, skirt, whatever you want to call it, it looked like a kilt to me, but I'm not sure. I said, yo, people are going to lose their mind. There is a sector of people who just get so outraged when black men complicate or transgress or transverse the traditional boundaries of masculinity. Now, I loved it. 
I think the I think it was fresh. It ain't for me. I ain't got the legs for it. I ain't got the style for it. You know, I'm I'm more old school, great sweatpants. But to a brother that has the the ability to rock it, why not? I say let him do what he wants to do. Don't make this a conspiracy theory about the white man trying to emasculate black men. That's not what's happening here. Don't make it a conspiracy theory that Russell Westbrook is joining the Illuminati and has to wear a dress, you know, which is what I heard on the internet from a bunch of people. It ain't none of that. The man has a, a fashion sense. The man has a style, and this is what he wants to rock. So let him rock it. Who cares? He's minding his own business. He's living his own life. He ain't asking y'all for nothing. If the man want to rock that, let him rock that. But let's also not conflate him rocking that with these notions of what it means to be a man. In other words, he's not less of a man, whatever that means, because he's rocking that. Is everybody in Scotland insufficiently masculine? I mean, come on, you sound dumb. The truth is, the man rocks something that was fashion forward. Either you like it or you don't. But but judge it on fashion terms, not on some bizarre masculinist frame. That's just tired. Anyway, y'all, stay with me. I got much more to tell you, or at least a little bit more to tell you, before I let you go, right after the break.